Hi everybody, Richard Trojan is here again at Artificial Lawyer TV. Today we're doing another product walkthrough. This time it's Doc Juris, which is a contract negotiation platform. Uh, to tell us a bit more about it is the CEO, Henal. Hi Henal. Hey Richard. Um, before we get into the demo itself, um, if you could just tell the audience a little bit about the company, how you started and what it actually does, just very broadly, and then we're going to get into the detail uh, very soon. Sure. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today, and thank you for the opportunity, Richard. Um, so my name is Hanal. I'm on the leadership team here at Doctorus, and uh, we're a contract technology company based in Houston, Texas, and our mission is to empower legal and business teams um, with software that quickly and consistently closes contracts and scale. Um, and you know, we started the company back in 2017. I, I was actually an in-house lawyer for a little over eight years. So a lot of the pain points that we uh, are, are solving are things that are real, things that uh, in-house lawyers experience every day. Um, so the majority of our customers are actually companies with legal and business teams uh, where contract negotiations are, are frequent specifically with commercial contracts. Um, so, for example, sales contracts or supply chain agreements. Fantastic. Okay, well, I shall disappear and let you give the demo, and then I'll pop back towards the end. So, uh, please take it away. Great. Um, yeah. So, first slide. You know, our approach to the contract lifecycle is really to start in the middle and move our way out with automation. Um, so, it's here in the review, redlining, and negotiation phase where organizations spend uh, most the most time and accrue the greatest risk. Um, and case in point, if you visit our homepage at www.doctors.com, we have a contract workflow assessment that automatically generates a PDF scorecard and it rates uh, contract negotiation workflow on a hundred point scale. And many companies, including several large ones, just this past week, as we close out this year, have reported many hours lost on formatting, converting documents, applying playbooks, and what's most relevant today, drafting amendments during the uh, uh, pre-signature phase of the life cycle. And so, by the way, before we move on, I encourage uh, anyone listening to this episode of ALTV to check out the assessment on our homepage um, at doctorist.com. It's complimentary. So today, our customers use Doctorist to compare uh, and negotiate third-party paper or incoming red lines to an existing template. Uh, and the way that it works is that a user can drag and drop PDFs or Word documents to the platform uh, or via integration through one of our connectors like Zapier or Power Automate. And from there, our contract uh, editor enables teams to collaborate on markups in a uh, beautifully designed interface using playbooks and past red lines. And on the other side of the process, a user can grab uh, a perfectly formatted Word document. And throughout this process, we're capturing and calculating inputs from the user that end up being very useful later for analytics. Um, so earlier we were discussing some of the questions in our workflow uh, assessment. One of them is around how amendments are drafted, which is really the thing that we're excited to uh, announce today. And, you know, uh, amendments are painful. You're, you're counting sections and sentences, inserting or replacing language, adding exhibits, and it's all in an effort to translate what would be changes to a contract in a purported human readable and amendment driven format. But unfortunately, because of the nuanced nature of amendments and the commercial contracting world, they're difficult to automate uh, as well. And even with the most advanced machine learning models. Uh, it's also very difficult to put in a self-service model for the business to take care of themselves. Uh, so often legal or an LPO ends up being the um, beneficiary of this work product. Um, and by the way, these amendments are drafted not just to amend a previous contract, but also to propose exceptions to a customer in the form of a, you know, an exception table or an acknowledgement letter uh, during a new contract negotiation. So it's a, you know, an average lawyer spend uh, 45 minutes just drafting a simple amendment. Um, uh, and unsurprisingly, in our workflow assessment on our website, answer C, as shown on the slide, is what the vast majority of companies do. Uh, they go through this very clunky process of manually drafting amendment language. You have you know, uh, a contract on one screen, um, you're squinting at another, and you're you know, determining you know, in, in the second line of section seven, we're going to replace in, uh, you know, the payment terms with this other provision. So it's very, very painful process. Um, so today, we're, we're actually very excited to announce Doctorus Amendments. It's the uh, fastest way to produce an amendment automatically directly from a markup or redline, all right inside of the doctor's tool. It's a first of its kind product um, on the market. It really is magic. And I wanna congratulate our team on getting this done. It was a big goal for us this year. So we're gonna jump right into a demo. What we're gonna do is uh, take a third-party document and uh, just to talk about context before we jump in, 
Um, you can imagine this agreement being, uh, you know, an old agreement that maybe you have to amend, uh, maybe to catch it up with uh, new privacy uh, uh, regulations, or it might be an agreement where the counterparty or your customer has told has uh, told you that, hey, but we don't accept red lines. You have to prepare an amendment, or you have to prepare an exception table. So those are two key scenarios, and we'll, we'll try to knock both of those out in this demo. All right, so here's the platform. And what we're gonna do is uh, take this agreement, which we've uploaded to the uh, application and prepare and prepare some at it. So uh, we're not gonna demo all of the features of Doctors, but at a very high level, this is the contract negotiation workspace that presents after you upload an agreement. This works on PDFs, uh, locked work documents, and we take the document and we put a different lens on that contract. So every contract looks the same, um, but we're not changing the underlying format. We're just surfacing it uh, in a different uh, model, a safe space for you to, to mark up and, and redline the agreement. And our powerful contract editor is uh, track changes enabled. So you can do things like one click intentionally omit um, and make some changes. You can apply your playbook and study the agreement in terms of you know, where it falls in line with uh, governing law and other uh, concepts in, in, the, in the document. And as I scroll down, as part of this uh, uh, amendment uh, process in our tool, what we're gonna do is make a couple of changes. So I've uh, intentionally omitted section 1.6, and we'll also go into the warranty provision and we'll change this. Actually, let's start with the, uh, uh, let's start with the payment term. So customers must pay for the software, change 30, uh, 30 days to 45. So uh, by the way, what makes our tool unique is that we're not an automated markup tool. Um, and, and we don't uh, purport to automatically redline your contracts. This is something that's human driven, but we use technology to support uh, uh, the human intelligence that's necessary to uh, produce this markup. To use a base of all analogy, you know, we, we don't take you to second base, we bring you all the way home with the markup. So uh, another example, we'll change the software warranty period. You know, we'll actually uh, scroll down here and uh, delete a clause so we can not only intentionally embed, but we can delete a section. And because data privacy is um, a, something that's new that we have to address, we're going to go ahead and add uh, uh, a GDPR standard contractual clauses exhibit. Now, setting aside that it's not particularly relevant anymore, but um, just as an example, we can drop in an exhibit uh, into, this, uh, into this contract as well. And I can scroll down and, and make some more changes. So perhaps I want to delete the um, arbitration provision in section 14.4 and leverage my playbook to you know, flip through the agreement and address other uh, con uh, concepts in the document, uh, making changes, addressing you know, fallbacks and other provisions. Um, so you can create a playbook that helps you drive your uh, markups um, and then produce an amendment on the other side. And that's what we're gonna do next. So what we're gonna do is export this contract back out and we have these options. So we can export your markups, which is sort of the, the, the uh, core capability of the application. But this new capability is we can take the markups and produce an amendment uh, using those markups. So we'll download uh, this Word document directly from uh, the application. And what we're going to do is open this up uh, on another screen. And uh, as you'll note, you'll notice that we've, automatically taken the changes uh, that we've prepared inside of uh, the contract a negotiation workspace that we surfaced and produced this automated, um, these automated, uh, this automated language. And what's uh, brilliant, brilliant about this is you maintain uh, an amended and restated copy in uh, the doctor's application, but we take care of all, a lot of the, uh, the, the time draining activity of counting sentences and determining where language is being replaced and deleted from. And you can also, and very conveniently, uh, drop in an exhibit at the bottom uh, of the contract. Now this uh, form of amendment uh, under which we uh, produce this amendment on uh, can be customized as well. So within the body of the playbook, there's a setting where you can set your standard form of amendment uh, on a per contract type basis and uh, configure your amendment exports to look a certain way. And so this is where you can start doing things like taking a, um, an exception table and inserting your exhibits, or sorry, an exception table and exporting your amendments to that exception table. Or maybe it's a, an acknowledgement letter that you, that you send as part of a T and C's negotiation. Um, it just enables much 
uh, a much richer negotiation experience, not just when you're reviewing a new agreement, but also when you're seeking to change or update uh, or do a change order on an existing contract. So that's, uh, that's a quick overview of the demo. The last thing I'll, I'll leave you with, Richard, is, um, you know, at Doc Juris, as we, uh, ex what, you know, one of the big takeaways with our application is that it's, um, it's data enabled. So as uh, contracts are reviewed in the tool, we're able to detect and determine, you know, the, the frequency at which certain concepts are negotiated. So how much time are we spending on governing law versus indemnity? Um, are we spending too much effort in a, in a particular area of the document? And for in-house counsel, it allows you know a, a richer um, a collaboration with outside counsel uh, to really focus on time and risk as a as a as a key KPI uh, to drive better results. So um, you know behind the scenes, there's a lot of uh, great uh, data analytics that we capture uh, in order to help you understand as a as a company where you're spending most of your resources. Uh, but on the front end, we provide this uh, tactical tool set uh, to get contracts done and, and get them drafted really quickly. Fantastic, really interesting. Well, if you just stay there, I'm just mm -hmm. gonna pose a few questions to you. So just first of all, sure. so obviously, obviously th there's a lot of value here for in-house legal teams, clearly. Uh, how does this work with external law firms? Do, do yeah. Can they work together easily through the platform? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, our uh, the majority, the concentration of our customers are in-house organizations. But in terms of, uh, but we do have a couple of law firms that use the product. Now, where, where it becomes really uh, tactical and useful for outside counsel is uh, if you're perhaps working on a fixed fee arrangement with a uh, contract review or you're an LPO, for example. What that does is allows you to increase um, the margin of your work. So do things a little bit faster, do things more efficiently. And then from a risk perspective, uh, you're able to establish playbooks with certain clients so that you can you know, empower your associates, empower uh, lower cost resources to produce this review at a very high level uh, without sacrificing quality uh, and speed. So th there's a lot of great um, um, synergy that this product creates between outside counsel and in-house. Uh, we have a lot of uh, our customers leverage outside counsel to develop the playbook, which is uh, quite nice because now outside counsel is now viewed as a, um, you know, as a, a subject matter expert on a particular type of contract. Maybe it's ISDAs or um, maybe leases. So instead of doing the actual uh, work of negotiating a lease, outside counsel is now providing you know, key advice on how to negotiate those leases and can then support uh, in-house counsel on the playbooks and the, uh, the, the, clause, the, the clauses that are necessary to support that, uh, that work product. Gotcha. Makes sense. Uh, interesting. So and what markets are you focused on at the moment? In, like geographically, obviously the US, but are you more right. broadly, uh, you're interested in the UK, for example, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, we're working with a couple of law firms in the UK, uh, one very large company um, in Europe, uh, one in Germany, and one in France, uh, but the majority of our uh, customers are here in the United States, so if I break it up geographically, our primary market is uh, North America um, and uh, Europe, right behind it. Fantastic. And just the last thing. So if anyone's watching this and goes, this is great, I'd like to know more, or I'd like to actually set up a POC, how do they get hold of this? I mean, aside from coming to your website and talking to you and so forth, but in yeah. terms of the technical aspect, how do they how do they onboard this? How do they get this implemented? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll uh, uh, throw up a slide here. So the way that our implementation works is uh, we first, uh, we have a conversation. So we discuss sort of, you know, what what goals are you trying to accomplish? When are you trying to do it? We put together a mutual action plan. Um, in terms of onboarding, it's very quick. So we stage up, um, uh, it's a cloud-based solution, by the way. So this product lives inside of um, Microsoft Azure Data Center. So we're able to spin up the service quickly. Uh, the first big task is to you know, determine what kinds of playbooks or tools that you need up front in order to use the product. So we have this, uh, for example, this capability of surfacing historical red lines as you're negotiating a contract, uh, which is really useful when you're um, you know, uh, looking for past examples of an indemnity. So those are areas where we would work with the client to collect some data and upload it to the platform so that it's uh, very useful uh, on day one. But um, in terms of a general implementation timeline, you know, it takes roughly two to three weeks to get started. And you know, we have uh, a number of uh, 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 processes that we go through to get a client up and going. 
Gotcha. Fantastic. And just very last question. Um, in terms of integrations, because, you know, it's an important subject, um, oh, I yeah. guess what Juris integrates with, with key systems that um, a company might be using. Yeah, absolutely. So because we're a, a vertical solution um, that's very specific, that's specifically tailored for redlining and negotiation, our approach is to build, uh, to, to, to have a strong integration bench. So we have a fully baked uh, web API. We're also one of the uh, very few legal tech companies, I would say one of the, maybe the, uh, yeah, one of the rare ones that have both a Zapier and a Power Automate connector. So you can use low code automation to configure Docturus to work with uh, any of these tools that you see uh, on the screen. You can, uh, for example, have an intake process where somebody requests the contract through, you know, Typeform or any of these other products. And uh, we can uh, route that contract request to Docturus, analyze against the playbook, produce an Excel file that shows you a screening report, and then we can, you know, round trip that document to, uh, you know, Google Drive. So there's a, you, you know, uh, in terms of low code automation, sky's the limit with Docturus. Fantastic. Thanks, Hanel. That's really interesting. And there's obviously plenty more that the platform can do, but I suggest that they come and check uh, out your website to learn some more. But thank you very much. And I hope to speak to you again. Thank you. Thanks again, Richard. Appreciate it.